Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. When did the first vision take place? We're going to dive deep into calendar systems, and doc the late Dr. John Pratt is going to tell us more about the Enoch calendar as well as some other calculations he's used to date the first vision. Check out our conversation. But, and then, so how does that relate to the first vision? Because you start. Oh, well, that gets me. Yes, yes, I see. We, well, See, you this asked is why me. We're on the tangents, you asked right? me. Yeah, tangent. We're talking <laughs> hyperbole. Hyper anyway, uh, that got me into sacred calendars. Okay. And then I found out about the calendar of Enoch. In the book of Enoch, seven whole chapters are devoted to describing a calendar. In the Bible, Moses is using this mosaic calendar, which is like the modern Hebrew calendar. And there's almost not a word about how it actually works. It's like on this day of this month, you have this festival. But you're supposed to be born knowing how it worked, and that's not in there. Seven chapters in the book of Enoch telling you how it works. So I decided to figure out how it worked. And I, I know how it works. There's no question how it works now. And on that calendar... Well, the long story short is there's this day, they, they name years the same, the Lord does this, this is not in the book of Enoch, it's just something the Lord does. He counts years the same as days, All, several places. Uh, book of Numbers, chapter 14, uh, the Lord's chewing out the people that were the 40 spies that went to spy out the land. And he said, because you spied out the land 40 days and I don't like your report, you're going to be in the wilderness 40 years because I count one year to a day. So he does that several places. Mm -hmm. okay, I count a year to a day. Well, they do that on the Enoch calendar. So every year in a row has a name that corresponds to one name of a day and a month and a year. And the Enoch year has 364 days instead of 365, has 364. And so there's cycles of 364 years, which correspond to 364 days. And I realized that there was this day in early March, on March, Sunday, March 26th, 1820, that was the beginning of a whole new era of 364 years. And then I got looking, and it was a perfect day for the first vision. And so I proposed in an article that, hey, this looks like this would have been the date of the first vision. It was a Sunday. It's the first day of a whole new era. And, well, then, then, it, and then that, that would have just stayed a cute speculation. So my, this was March 20th? March 18th, 26th. 26th. Sunday, March 26th, 1820. And now I'm going to mention John Lefkin's work. Is that okay to slip yeah, into that? Yeah, but let me throw something out here. Because you, you said that this calendar of Enoch only had 364 days. They must have had leap days or leap okay, weeks so or something he, in there, Okay, so here's right? the deal. It's set up on the week. Um, our, our Gregorian calendar really has almost nothing to do with the week. It's, every, it's different every year. The reason we have a week, when you have a calendar on the wall, it's divided into weeks. Why is that? Because it was the Catholic Pope Gregory the Thirteenth who made the calendar, and it's important to have Easter right. The whole idea, of, the whole reason they redid the calendar was Easter was going into the summer, and they knew it was supposed to be in the spring. Mm -hmm. So they fixed the calendar by ten days in in 1582. They went from October 4th to October 15th. They skipped ten days to fix the calendar. So the Easter would be in the spring. So we have the week. But if you think about it, the Gregorian calendar, you could have one without weeks. You could divide it up any way you want. But we use weeks because we're a Christian nation. And so we, anyway, the week is not really part of the Gregorian calendar, if you think about it. Sure. The Enoch calendar, the week is part of it. Every year has to start on a Sunday. It starts on the first day of the week. And it has four quarters of each of them, uh, three months. And each one is, see, there's 52 weeks in a year, 
in 364 days, 52 right. weeks. That means 13 weeks and a quarter. For three, four times 13 is 52. And so every quarter starts on a Sunday. This is a great calendar for businesses right. who are Christian businesses and they want to do their quarterly reports. And everyone has exactly 91 days. But as you say, wait a minute, you're going to get way off in, in just five years. You know, you're going to be a week off. And you're going to be a day and a quarter off every year. Right. In five years, you're going to be five days and five quarters or almost seven days off. Well, then after about five years, you put in a whole extra week. So you have leap weeks instead of leap days. Okay. So you go 364 and then one of them will have a whole extra week. And so, so it, because you add a week, it'll always start on a Sunday. And so every five years, you add another week. About every five Is years. There's a, there's a system, uh, and it's very accurate. It's, it's at least as accurate as the Gregorian calendar. Okay. And then do, do, do they add that the spring, winter, summer, fall? Right. They have, they, they have. In fact, those are holy days. That's one. The solstices and equinoxes are holy days on the calendars. Okay. Yeah. And the, and the, well, just, again, these are details, folks. The guy's into science. He wants all of this. <laughs> exactly. We don't get to talk to many scientists. Here. I know. It's, you, I got to take advantage. This of it. will probably go in the can, okay? But <laughs> anyway, every equinox and solstice is on a Saturday, and then the first day of the new quarter is on the next day is on a Sunday, and they're both holy days, okay? Okay. The first day of every quarter, first day of every equinox. And so, because I'm I'm trying to remember. The Roman calendar, they had two months that were unnamed. Um, oh, yes. Which are now July and August. August, right. right and right. so we had, so essentially back in the days of Rome, they had 60 days essentially where they just didn't name them. And that's why December, December usually means it's the 10th, 10th month. right. But they had these two months that didn't count. Well, and so it started, that, well, yeah, you're mixing two things. It started in March. It started basically in March. See, that's when the, the year's supposed to start came in March, and they knew that. And so if you start in March is the first, then December is, in fact, the 10th. The, September 7, October, November, December, right. 7, 8, 9, 10. And but they just had this summer of... Yeah, they it? had some... Right, and it was fuzzy, and they were trying to do the moon, and... and uh, they had all, and they had weeks more like of nine days and or eight days and they had market day and so finally they they weren't as big on well actually Julius Caesar wasn't as big on the week uh, who brought the week into it was that's separate that's Constantine where they bring the Easter into it but uh, when it was just the pagan Roman. Uh, yeah, Julius, July is named for Julius Caesar and Augustus, August for Augustus. Right. And then they're fighting over, you know, the, we both want 31 days. And so they both and, got 31 days. <laughs> and it turns out the summer is a little longer when you actually look at the actual times of the, the summer is longer. So that worked out really slick to have those two. We're, nobody cares well, about any of this. There's a people out there. <laughs> but it's interesting to me. All right, it's all my right. My podcast, so I, uh, you know, if people don't want to watch it, you know, uh, that's we'll fine. Get into some other stuff. Right? Okay. But anyway, yeah. So okay. So so go back to the Enoch calendar. You've got four, oh, four quarters it, of it thirteen has, weeks. Right. And then you you would add that next leap week into after which quarter? Uh, after the it always starts in the spring. So it's at the end of the of the winter quarter. End of the winter quarter. It has an extra seven days. Okay. And so, the, so a simple thing on the Enoch calendar is it usually starts uh, on the sunny Sunday on or after the first day of spring, which is around March 20th. So the first day is going to either be March 20th up through about 26th, whichever day is a Sunday. And then sometimes it's a little over or a little under, and that's we are not going to go into. But that's why Sunday, March 26th, was actually considered the first day of the year because it was a Sunday after the spring equinox, the first Sunday. So you don't even need a computer or anything. Most of the time, 
New Year's Day on Enoch calendar is the Sunday after the spring equinox. Okay. And in 1820. And I'll just slip in one extra thing since you're interested in this, and that is when you're counting the years, I told you of, if I, in sets of 364, five sets of 364 years, if you do five times 364, you'll get 1820. And so it turns out the year Christ was born was this sacred year also. And in the big years, so in, in, the big, in, the, in the grand years of 364, he's born in the year, it should be called zero for astronomers. They call it 1 BC, but they had no zero. Right. So he's born in the year zero, and then three, the years 364 and 728, and you go up five of those, and it's the year 1820. And so that's why it's such a massive big year and big day is it's all the way from Christ, and Christ is born in one of these years, too. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so this is a really interesting. So you're tying the birth of Christ into the first vision. Into the first vision, exactly. And so, so you think you've nailed the date as March 26, 1820? Well, it was all proposed until, and I can say it in a sentence, John Lefkin rides up on a white horse, an, an independent researcher who finds two confirming things. Number one, he finds weather reports that shows that March 26th was the best warm day of spring in New, up in New England mm -hmm. when it was snowing on April 6th. You know, a lot of people have thought, well, I was probably born on April 6th in 18, uh, back in, in the year the first vision they thought might be on April 6th, and it turned out it was very cold and not good weather that day. But on March 26th, the weather, it's the one day that had like perfect sunny weather. That's why Joseph Smith would remember that he'd say, you know, I don't know what the day was, but it was a warm, clear spring day. Well, yeah, and because it, it snowed the whole month after that, so he's going to remember that. Uh, so he had the weather reports, and the first weather reports ever made national in the world, as far as he can figure out, was in the United States in that year, 1820. Yeah. <laughs> if it had been 1819, we'd have been out of luck. You're out of luck. And so it was 1820, and we got the weather. And so then, the Army started tracking the weather for a while. You know, Army, the, the weather started with an Army, the Surgeon General of the United States Army saying, you know, if we knew the weather, we could keep our soldiers healthier. So he took 14, now, now I'm, well, I'm going to try to do short answers, but he's at, at the 14 military stations uh, around, he, he had people take the weather and notice the wind and the rain and the temperature uh, three times a day, 14 all around. It's like 7 a.m. noon and then... Right. Uh, and so we have the weather reports. So anyway, number one, there's confirmation that that was a warm spring, sunny day. And then uh, this John Leffring guy happens to be up in New England and have a, he has a maple syrup business where he makes maple syrup. He knows the process. And it turns out by looking, Lucy Mack was the one that knew how to make maple sugar and maple syrup. And it turns out that that weather pattern is exactly the day, the time when they would have been working hard doing maple syrup. The story is that Joseph had left his axe in the tree, and he goes to the grove to pray. He, would have, he couldn't have prayed on the Friday or the Saturday, but then on Sunday it's the day of rest, and there's no maple sugar running. You have to you do that when it runs. It has to do with temperature changes. So anyway, he had two different separate witnesses that the day was correct. So that's what made it yeah, into a so video. So it has to do with the maple sugar runs and the, that was a perfect day. It was a perfect day for, for to be after the maple sugar runs were over to have a day of rest. And it was clear and sunny and those were confirming. If all it was was my Enoch date, nobody would have cared because they'd say, oh yeah, Dr. Pratt and his woo-woo calendars, he thinks he knows the date. But when 
you have, wait a minute, there's weather reports. And if it's not that date, what date was it? And you say, oh, yeah, it snowed all through April. And this is New England. So the idea is if you're making maple syrup, you need a lot of changes in temperature. Changes. To get the it's got to go from cold to hot. And then the pressure change. And then you get about two days of that. But the Sunday was the third day, and it was from hot to hot, and there's no change. And so nothing would be running on Sunday, and it's the day you're supposed to rest anyway, and a perfect day for him to go pray. Because he probably would have been checking to see if the syrup was running, which it wasn't running. Well, they would know. Yeah. They don't even have to. When it, they, they might have checked, but when you talk to those old Vermonters, they know this. They know this yeah. stuff inside and out. Yeah, Vermont, New York, New Hampshire, they're all big maple syrup places. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, that's very cool. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. John Pratt. In our next conversation, we'll talk about Joseph's memory. Is it possible he got the year of the first vision wrong? Exactly. If Joseph Smith got something wrong, he's a 14-year-old kid. If, if I wouldn't be upset if he remembered something imperfectly. We know he had some different accounts, right. and it wasn't always the same. But in the 1838 account, which was adopted, he really tried to go back and get it all right, and not just you know, whip it off the top of his head to a newspaper reporter who was asking. And I'm saying he got it right. I'm not, I'm not saying I trust the word of Joseph Smith. I'm saying... If, I'm saying if Joseph Smith had said it was 1823, I'd be saying, no, actually, it was 1820. <laughs> and he got that well, wrong. Well, the, if you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe for just $5 a month at patreon.com slash gospel tangents, and you can hear the entire interview before everybody else. If you'd like to watch the entire video for just $8 a month, you can either subscribe on YouTube, Patreon, or my website, gospeltangents.com. Just click the yellow subscribe button, and I'll add you to our Gospel Tangents Insiders group so that you can see entire videos. For those interested in a PDF transcript, you can subscribe at either Patreon or on my website. For just $10 a month, I'll send you a PDF as soon as it's complete. If you'd like a copy of the paperback as well as a PDF, just sign up for $20 a month at either Patreon or my website, gospeltangents.com. Of course, you can buy individual transcripts at amazon.com and just do a search for Gospel Tangents interview and you can see all the things that we have there. Don't forget to support Gospel Tangents with an awesome t-shirt like one of these. You can subscribe at Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. Get our latest updates at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Also, you can get our Twitter updates at gospeltangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got more of our great videos. Thanks again.